breaking it all down. I'm Count Zero. My apologies for this episode being late. I'm starting a new job, and so there's going to be a delay for future installments. I'm probably not going to be able to do as many full, in-depth breakdowns in video of uh, video games as I have in the past. I'm still planning on doing a full breakdown of Gears of War 2. I'm getting the footage together for that from someone who has been graciously willing to let me use fo footage from his Let's Play. But there will be a delay on that. Um, also, because of my work schedule, I'm going to be shuffling my releases back. I'm still going to try and go for a regular review every week, but it's probably going to be more on Sunday now instead of on Saturday. I'm also probably going to, probably going to go a bit more book-focused, maybe a bit more movie and comic book-focused than with vi uh, video games, just because for reviewing video games, at least current video games, it takes longer for me to go through it, capture video game footage, then replay black, black, replay back through the footage to get all that done. All that business out of the way, time to talk about the book I'm reviewing this week. I'm reviewing Mon Harlan Coben's detective thriller, well, it, it's, a de it's a detective novel, Deal Breaker, the first novel featuring Myron Bolitar. The basically he's a showbiz agent. Not even showbiz agent, he's a sports agent. This is, in short, a mystery novel with Arliss. Sort of. I say sort of because I haven't actually seen Arliss. That's on my list of T V series to watch at some point. Now, since this is a mystery thriller series, I'm not gonna go too far in depth with this. Because honestly, I'm not gonna spoil the ending of it. That would ruin it. I'll kind of hint at it using a reference to another book, but again, not gonna try and spoil it. I'm not gonna spoil this for you. Also, you may notice my sound quality has decreased. This is because my lapel mic has broken. So until I get a new microphone, I'm stuck with this old with an older mic. So. That's the mic I'm using. Anyway, my main character is Myron Bolotar, an ex-collegiate basketball player whose prospects for being a big-name NBA basketball player basically ends up ended up collapsing a while back. So instead, he became a sports agent and running his own company. Um. Fortunately, before this, he went to Harvard, got in law, and he got this, this law degree, and he had a background working with the FBI briefly. Um, and he's that's ba that's basically our main character. We do have a supporting cast. He has a secretary who is used to be a female professional wrestler, and his business partner who has the very effete old money name of Windsor Horn Lockwood the third. Now, to talk about this, basically start talking about my complaints about the book. My main problem is Wynn. Windsor's nickname is Wynn. Windsor is, well, he is a gay, old money rich ninja. He is also Myron's muscle. And this is my problem with it, because he's totally different from everything else in here. The series itself stays to a fairly straightforward, this is what the real world of sports is like, take away the glitz and the glamour and the clean image that the leagues want to put on things. And this is the CD underbelly that you... that leads to things like, for example, the steroid scandal in baseball. This is the world that Myron lives in. Because, to be honest, when you get to murder and that sort of thing, it's not going to be a nice, big, clean-cut, pretty, attractive little world to it like it would be otherwise. You're not... When, it, when business is involved, and big-money business is involved... 
you're generally stepping out of the realm of the cozy. So, with that in mind, when we come to the character of Wynne, and Wynne's nocturnal visits at Myron's behest to various characters to intimidate them, it totally doesn't fit. It's an element of fancy in a setting that's otherwise grim. I understand having comic relief. I'm a fan of Castle. They put comic relief in there a lot. But it never really gets too unrealistic, aside from, I mean, having a writer strapping on his bulletproof vest with writer written on the front to tag along with police officers on a raid. That's a certain degree of fancy, yes, but it's not Batman level breaking and entering and intimidation in the middle of the night. Anyway, the two main plots of the book, there's an A plot and a B plot, relate to a couple of Harlan's clients. One is a um, collegiate um, football player named Christian whose ex girlfriend disappeared. Uh, not ex, he's ex now, but then girlfriend, disappeared under mysterious circumstances while he was in college, and has now appeared to resurface. And Christian tried to figure out what's going on, because there, there was a scandal behind this when it happened, and he needs to know the truth, both for his own peace of mind and to avoid scandal that could possibly scuttle his career. And so Myrons investigates this, and as he investigates this, he discovers a couple other murders related to this, and much more lingering under this under the surface on this case. On the other hand, for the B case, we have one of Myron's clients who signed a contract with a another agent while he was in high school, basically when he was ineligible to sign pro contracts, and he's trying to get out of it and he's now basically getting threatened by the mob. And that's our B-plot. One has a degree of mystery to it. The other one is more crime thriller. We know who the bad guys are. It's just finding a way to get around them thing going on. And what kind of bugs me, in a nutshell, is that I really feel that maybe if they'd made this book a little shorter, if they went, you know, maybe we shouldn't go for the hardcover for the first thing and just start the paperback and do hardcover for later volumes or something, that this could have worked better. But instead it feels like Co uh, Coben doesn't have confidence in his material. He doesn't have confidence in his main plot. And he feels like instead of ha instead of having his the story be the focus of the story, the main plot drive the narrative and have the focus of the narrative and everything be there. Just stick to that. He has to stick a B plot in there, a completely unrelated B plot. They don't come back to get these two plots. Don't never meet in the course of this book. Um, instead of having these two B plots come um, come together at some point. Have well, these two plots come together? He has them basically. One of them is in there to power the book. The uh, muscle plot is solely padding. It could have quite possibly been an entirely different book in its own right, but it's not. And it's disappointing, kind of. I don't know if this is a case of the fall of the short story as a medium leading to this, or if this is a case of just lack of confidence in the main narrative. Because, frankly, in older days, not like the pulp days of Raymond Chandler, but back in when we were having more anthology magazines, we could have very easily seen both of these stories published separately as short stories. A novella or novelette from Coben with the Christian case, and then a shorter story with the B-plot about the young player getting muscled by, by angle breakers and from this mob boss. 
and that could have worked perfectly. It would have been great two, two separate, different, unrelated stories. That could have been awesome. That's not what happened here. And that's what's disappointing. It's not a major deal breaker, if you'll forgive the expression, but it does take away from the book's flow. You have to stop and put one story on the back burner for the other one to take the forefront. And because of this, the momentum that the other story built loses something. It stops and has to coast. And you have to hope, and the writer in this case is probably having to hope that he's built up enough momentum here with the other story so that when he comes back to it after he's done giving the other plot a boost, that he can pick back up where he left off. It works, kind of, but it doesn't work as well as if we just had one story be the focus of the whole thing. Ultimately, though, this isn't a bad book, and considering this is the first entry in the series, I can't say too much bad about it. I don't know. If this, I don't know if this is Corbin's first book. I don't think it is, but it is a good book, and I definitely recommend it to various, basically anyone who is a fan of mystery novels, and particularly people who are interested in sports and likes to see more about the other side of the business. Um, so, Dan, this isn't his first thriller. Uh, he'd actually written a few novels before this, but none of them were really quite really the same sort of suspense thriller that genre that this one is. Um, I mean, there were thrillers. It's a novel Miracle Cure and Play Dead, which came before this, which were just standalones. But, these are all, this is alright. Now, for my next reviews, um, I'm going to try to get back into the game book, game book pattern. We'll see how this turns out. Since I am employed, you can hopefully expect for me to get a better microphone in the not too distant future as well as hopefully, finally, get a better webcam. We'll see how this goes. Um, until next time, though, I'm Count Zero, and thanks for watching.